Hey guys, it's Julesy. Shop smart brown girl because black women are valuable. Custom sweatshirts now available. Thank you for supporting. Um, let's get into this movie review because I had the opportunity to see if Bill Street could talk at the National Museum of African American History and Culture in DC back in October. Bill Street is Barry Jenkins' take on James Baldwin's book by the same title. Now, I did a South by Southwest talk with Barry this year in February for YouTube. And when I was told Barry would be doing the talk with me, like just me and him on his panel, I already knew he was producing the film. So I went back to reread the book. I haven't read it since sixth grade. And this is like the second or third Baldwin book after Go Tell It on the Mountain and Giovanni's Room that I read, I think way back when. I legit picked it up again so I could have something to talk to Barry Jenkins about so I could be prepared to appear super intelligent but then by the time I actually got the book in the mail I didn't have time to read it before the thing but you know I still <laughs> I still did good. It still came up in the conversation though because like well you ever have conversations with yourself like you ever imagine like preparing yourself to talk to someone and so you like talk through something and even if you're like no 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 we're not gonna talk about that somehow you know Gobble, 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 it comes up because you put it out into the universe. Yeah, that shit. So it was fine because his producing a Baldwin book as a film is a very, very big deal. And maybe the conversation led into Bill Street because I definitely had it on my mind to say something to him about his production on the book Underground, which I did not like at all. Um, it just wasn't good. Like, sheesh. <laughs> um, so anyway, Barry did ask me what I thought of Bill Street, the book. Um, because I had mentioned that I've read just about every Baldwin book there is. Not not that I could recall each and every one of them, but I pulled from the throes of my sixth grade memory to say it wasn't one of my favorite Baldwin books because I don't think he writes women characters as well as he writes male characters, but it was still good. And y'all, I'm trying to say even my BS game <laughs> is good because after rereading the book, I did like it m more now probably because I've lived a little more. Black Lives Matter has become a thing. I'm a little bit more mature. I know my history now. Just having a better understanding of the political history around black people and the criminal justice system compared to how we were seeing things in the late 90s when I first read it, the book definitely registered with me more now as an adult. But I still think even though the story is told through the eyes of Tish, a young girl in Harlem, the women characters read a bit more flat in comparison to the men. And to talk about my South South Southwest panel, I want to know if Barry Jenkins got this same photo because as a single black woman, where am I hanging this up at my house? But let's get to this review. You ready for this? I've never been more ready for anything in my whole life. To get to the film, that will be one criticism that still holds true for me, though it's an overall, oh my gosh, it's such a beautiful, gorgeous film and none of my criticisms do I want to hold harshly against the film because it just, I just, I just loved it. But the women characters err on the side of characters. Well, some of them do. And maybe I should warn you, all right, before I get too far into this, there really ain't no way for me to avoid giving spoilers because I'm going to compare the film to the book. And well, we have to discuss the story arc here, so sorry. But go read the book, go read it. It's a quick, short read. And definitely, definitely, definitely make your way to see if Bill Street could talk in the theater. <laughs> now move on. I love that this is not a dialogue heavy movie. I think Barry Jenkins holds the film very true and in line with the narrative that Baldwin wrote. And what's great about the book is the way that Baldwin describes Tish and Fani's young blossoming relationship, the sort of trust and the love that they have between each other. And to see that manifested in film, on I think on even maybe a higher level than the way that Baldwin writes it without them relying on having to like verbally say it. It's just, there's something so intimately sacred and beautiful about all of that. It's a look, it's an exchange of looks and kinetic energy that's just, I love how the film made me feel like I was peeking into something truly sacred and intimate. Now, when the film ended, my homeboy turned to me and asked, wasn't that depressing? And I think the book ends on a bit of a sadder note than the movie itself does. Like, this, the film doesn't delve as much into Fani's father. 
like the book does, I guess, which is weird to say because if Bill Street is a really short, compact book, so when I say delve, it's not like there's like this big broad space between how the film does it and how the book does it, but it's it's there. Baldwin is such an eloquent writer that when you take a piece out of what he's inserted, like you feel, you feel that missing, you feel it. But again, it's not a long book, so I don't think Baldwin goes that much further than Jenkins does with the film, but there were passages that really stuck with me. Like the comment about Tisha's sister Ernestine and oh, who's played by Tiana Paris in the movie and her being the strong friend that no one checks in on and how that makes us f***ed up as people like that. Like if that's actually what the book kind of says. It's like, that inspired my whole stop abusing your strong friends video back in March. And I wanted to see that manifest in the film. Ernestine's strength, Fani's father's deterioration, Tish's and Fani's father's blossoming friendship. That was kind of shown, but I don't know if people walked out of the theater thinking about what it meant for those two men to form a sort of brotherhood over realizing the control they lacked in their personhoods as black men in Harlem and protecting their families and offsprings. You know, part of some of the characters being flat is probably because Tish was expanded and I really appreciated that she was a much more robust character in the film than the sort of nymphish narrator feeling that the book left me with and Kiki Lane is just gorgeous and did wonderful as Tish. I am so happy that there were no colorism issues in casting. Thank you to Lord. Shout out to you Barry Jenkins. Y'all did the damn thing. It was brown. It was black as and it was all around. Hm, beautiful. Now Regina King. Regina mother effing king seven seconds sis, she killed that. You are doing the damn thing, Miss King. Not only did she kill the role of Tish's mother, Sharon, her and Tish and Fani, played by Stephen James, they all did the damn thing. And it was just so beautiful and so tragically poetic and gut-wrenching. How many times have I said beautiful thus far? I was just so here in the moment with their waning hope and deeply embedded pain and exhaustion. Them mother effing Brian Tyree Henry. Sir, if Paperboy don't give us range, that was one of the scenes I was also waiting for. Like, like let me backtrack here. Let, 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 me, let me backtrack here. There were a few scenes I actually wanted to see. Fonny's mother and sister at Tish's house being one, um, and I, for some reason I feel like there was more than one encounter of them at their house. And it was kind of rolled into one in the film, but I might be off. And then Tish and Fani's first time bumping pelvic bones, which we got, it was cute. And when Fani's childhood friend, Daniel, comes over for dinner and breaks down while talking about what being incarcerated did to him. One of my favorite elements of Baldwin's writing is the way he enlightens the intimacy between black men, because we don't think of it, nor do we see it often. We see, and like, we see women share this sacred range of intimacy with each other. And intimacy doesn't always mean sex, but at minimum, it's a very close bond, a connection and understanding understanding of the vastness of two emotional selves. And in the book, Danny, Daniel, and Fani have that moment. And it's a foreshadowing of sorts, because it starts to sort of fear in you when Fani is locked up. But I was just here for every minute of Brian Tyree Henry, because my nigga has range, and he did that. As does the Queen Regina King, who just stuck it to the bones. Like, that was one of the things when I read the book that I really couldn't envision clearly. Sharon, this black mother in the, what was it, 1950s Harlem, traveling to Puerto Rico to track down Fani's accuser. And maybe that's because of my own stilted view of black motherhood. But the film and Regina made it so real. And it's like, how do you make frustration and exasperation look <sighs> looks so poetically beautiful. Like, how you do that? Can you put a bitch on? Some of the criticism that I've heard around the actor playing Fonny, um, Stephen, James, Stephen, whatever his name was, being better looking than how he was depicted in the book. And it's, it's funny because I know in the book, Tish's friend says he's ugly, but the description she gave after saying he was ugly, it was, it goes like, his skin was just raw, wet potato rinds and eyes like a Chinaman and all that nappy hair and then thick lips. You know, that actually didn't register to me as particularly ugly, ugly. I don't, I don't know, it just kind of, when I, I remember reading that passage and thinking, oh, he's just more mundane and just a, like a regular nigga. But also like I'm wondering maybe has our view of like what we, 
Mm, I don't know. I don't know that our view of what we see as, I'm wondering if maybe my view of how I view the beauty in black men is more expanded than maybe how black men were projected to be ideally or mainstream beautiful in the in that era of Baldwin. I don't know if that's true or not, because I think on some levels our vision of mainstream beauty has definitely narrowed, but whatever, that's another conversation. I don't know. Think about it. What you think? But I didn't I didn't feel that like Stephen James was like that distractingly beautiful that it took away from the essence of the character. Um, I mean, it's just kind of hard to wash the sheen of wealth from actors in general. Have you ever noticed that in movies? People playing homeless characters and they got all their teeth, veneers in, and you're just like, hmm, everyone has nice smiles and proportioned bodies. How fascinating. But I wasn't bothered at all. I actually think he did a really, really good job playing Fani, and I really enjoyed the, the dynamic between him and Tish. I'm still going back and forth about whether the movie ends on a slightly more optimistic note than the book. It does end with like a different kind of hope in general. The book is sorrow and Baldwin ain't ever minced his words on the plight of black people in America, a constant state of rage. Jenkins style is really beautiful cinematography. It's really, it's very sweeping melancholy where moonlight is color graded in like this very cool blue tones while well, black boys turn blue in the midnight. <laughs> Bill Street is a much more like warm, golden. It's like, even though it's this really heavy like topic, it just feels much airier, like a, like a, a field of sunflowers kind of. There is a very golden warm tone visually and both from what's emitting from the film. It's just really gorgeous cinematography around the mon more mundane aspects of black livelihood and that adds a sort of joy that maybe I didn't pick up in the book. And really because some characters in the film are abbreviated, namely Fani's father and really Fani's family as a whole. I mean, Fani's mother and sister in the book are pretty flat in character, but his I just think there was a little bit more added to his dad in the book. And we get we get almost all of it, but there's just certain key elements that happen in the book or scenes and setups that kind of really draw it together that I didn't see happen in the film. And so that kind of pushes the book towards being sadder for me because Fani's father's trajectory is definitely sad. And then the wrap up of Fani's incarceration is slightly different than the book. <laughs> you know, neither feels particularly good. Like it's a different type of settling hope, but still settling for the short end of the stick nonetheless. I miss to say that getting probation after serving time versus getting bail, huh, I don't know. But yeah, in the end, I love the film so much so overall that I asked about hosting a screening and I don't know if that going, I don't, it doesn't look like that went anywhere, but I still say go see it. Read the book, yes, it's quick, it's easy, it's an enjoyable read to do on your own, check it out from the library. And you can read it before you go see it or read it after you see it, but go see the film because it is absolutely amazing and I wholeheartedly enjoyed it.